All right, let's get started here. So hi again. Thanks for joining our webinar um, on the applicant tracking system. I'm here today with Paola, who is an account executive here at Factorial. Hi, Paola, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, so to give a brief overview of Paola's background, Paola is an experienced HR consultant with a genuine passion for helping companies find the perfect candidates for their roles. Having an extensive industry experience, she has worked with a diverse range of organizations from startups to large corporations. Paola firmly believes in the potential of the right people, recognizing that a company's success greatly relies on the recruitment of top tier talent. So thanks for being here, Paola. Let me share my screen. We will hop to the agenda where we'll be covering um, what exactly is an ATS, the benefits of an ATS in the workplace, how you can implement an ATS solution through Factorial, and we'll jump to Q&A. So to cover really quickly for those who don't know what an ATS system is, um, the applicant tracking systems are software solutions that organizations use to simplify hiring processes, manage candidate applications, and find the best candidates for job opportunities. With automated features, ATS helps recruiters efficiently go through large applicant pools, saving time and resources while ensuring, ensuring a fair and systematic candidate evaluation. So with that in mind, uh, could you jump into, before we discuss what exactly the benefits of an ATS are, could you walk us through some challenges in the talent acquisition process today and how ATS could help overcome these hurdles? Yeah, no, for sure. So I think some of the biggest challenges for recruiters right now is finding the top talent and, you know, posting, getting the information out to the best talent. Uh, so often recruiters will post multiple job boarding sites and because they're posting on so many job board sites there it's very difficult or it's very easy actually in fact to lose track of which candidates are applying where you often have duplicate uh, candidates applying to uh, the same job but in different sources so they'll apply on indeed then they'll apply on linkedin uh, and so it's very difficult to keep track of all the candidates it's difficult to know which skill sets each candidate has what their resume is saying um, and so it's important to concise all of this into one platform and uh, as well as if you have it all in one HRS platform, it is then sim very simple to hire and onboard that employee. And so those are some of the benefits of having your a ATS within your HRS system like Factorial. Amazing. So how exactly does ATS help Factorial stay organized? That's a great question. So what I'll do is I'll be able to share my screen to show you a little bit more about Factorial's ATS. So we are in Factorial right now. My demo is built from Dunder Mifflin. So in my example, you'll probably see a lot of uh, the office characters. And so in my example here, Dwight ran a fire safety training and it was a complete disaster. So he got fired from his job and we are now looking for a re replacement for the assistant to the regional manager. And so as Toby, the recruiter, what I'd be doing is I'd be going into the your company section into the recruitment field. In the recruitment field, there's a number of different functionalities. So I can start the jobs that I, as a, as a recruiter, I'm working on because you may have multiple recruiters within the field. So each recruiter might be working on different jobs, job postings. Uh, you have the candidates tab. So this is like the pool of all your uh, all the candidates that I've ever applied with duplicates being removed. You have all the messages that you've sent to candidates and any open positions. And we'll kind of dive into these fields a little bit more as we jump through the demo. But right now, I just want to show how it's super, super easy and efficient to create a job posting within uh, Factorial's HRIS system. You simply click into the not new job posting. You write the title for the job posting, uh, assistant to the regional manager. You choose the workplace. In this case, we're going to be in Scranton, which team he's a part of the sales team and the type of work is on site. And then you click next. After this, you're able to all in one place, put all the necessary information for the application, such as perhaps, you know, the annual salary, you can maybe hide it or make it visible. The contract type, in this case, it's indefinite and schedule is uh, full time, but you know, you might be hiring for part-time employees as well. 
And what's awesome is that Factorial is now implementing AI. So instead of you having to think about these new job descriptions, especially if you're posting multiple job descriptions that you know consistently change, you're able to just draft something with our AI system. And so here you go. You already have something written up for the job posting super, super quickly. It took less than a second. Um, and you can obviously go in and edit any of it to make it more relatable to your company. But at least you have a very general outline, like the standard things like knowing MS office suites. And you can just simply save the description. As we scroll up, there's a couple of other sections that we can modify, such as the application form. So what are you requiring from, the, from your candidates? Do you require a CV, a phone number, a personal URL, uh, like their uh, BitHub or uh, whatever it may be, their cover letter? Maybe you want a photo. In this case, I would say I wouldn't ask for a photo, but you never know. Uh, you can also add any additional questions that are not our standard. So perhaps maybe it's, do you require a visa? visa. And then you can choose the field text. Is it short text, single choice, multiple choice? So in our case, it would be yes, no, not sure. And this is a mandatory question and you can save it, uh, which will, it will now appear on your application. And then you can also modify the hiring process, which is super important in staying organized in your candidate application. So you'll know exactly at which stage each of your candidates fits. So you can have the stage of new, which is when they just first apply. Then uh, in my case, I have evaluation, in-person interview, evaluation number two, offer, and then hired. But you can go in and modify any of these stages. You can move them around uh, as needed. You can add another hiring stage, or you can simply edit, and maybe this would be a phone interview. And this could be a screening, interview assessment, or so on. So in my case, it's an interview. Uh, and then, then after the phone interview, they go into the personal interview. Uh, what's great about this is then afterwards, you're able to preview this, this uh, specific candidacy. So let me show you how that's done in an already existed published uh, job posting. So I'm going to jump in a, an existed published job posting right here because uh, I already had one created. And uh, what's really great about that is uh, once you're ready, once you've filled out all your job detail, all your application forms, hiring process and promotions, you, uh, you're able to promote this on over 100 job boards. So with Join, we are integrated with Join, which allows you to post on Indeed, Glassdoor, all the other job posting boards out there. Uh, and then you also have... Um, LinkedIn, which is one of the main sources to posting jobs right now. So you can post everything just through one click of a button to over 100 job boards uh, in the world. Uh, and what it would look like if I copy my URL is it would create a very, very neat page for the job. So your applicant, it's going to firstly uh, attract the most talented candidates because they're able to see that you are organized. It will take them to your website where they can do research on your jobs. So your candidates can be better prepared for their interviews with you as well. Uh, so they have all the information right here. And when they apply um, and fill out all that information that we were collecting earlier or creating earlier, uh, they can, uh, their candidacy will all go into one talent pool here in Factorial. And so now we're going to jump into that candidate pool here which is the applications tab. Uh, very simply, this is the applications tab where you're able to see all your candidates. You can see at what phase or stage they're in in the application. Are they doing the case study? Are they new? Have they just been hired uh, and they've signed the contract? Have they been hired and not signed the contract? Or are they at the phone call stage? Uh, you can also see their ratings, which we'll jump into in a little bit more uh, depth uh, in here. So, for example, let's look at Joseph Smith. When we click into him, we're able to see his resume just here on the left-hand side, which is great. Uh, we're also able to send him messages. Uh, and we're able to either write a custom message, so hi, John, so on and so forth, or we can actually do a customized message, which would really make save time for recruiters, right? Because you're always saying the thank you for applying message. You're always, unfortunately, sending rejection letters. And those can be customized within uh, Factorial. So you're not constantly rewriting these messages. So let's do thank you for applying, John. So it already uses uh, variable fields uh, so that your um, 
you know, candidates names and job uh, titles are filled out. And you can either send it now or you can send it uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. or next Monday in two hours, which is super great. We can also go here into the notes, and this is where you and the other recruiters are able to discuss what's been going on through the recruitment process. And so right now, we can see that he is in the case study stage. So let's see what Holly and Toby have been saying about this candidate so far. So Toby said uh, that um, he is not, Joseph has not understood the case study assignment. And Holly said that the phone interview was okay. He does have a lot of leadership skills, which we can see here. She added a tag leadership, which is great. We can create custom tags uh, that will later be used for filtering, filtering candidates. And we'll talk about that as well in a little bit. Um, but as we can see, his rating is not very high. It's on average, like a three or 2.5. Um, so this Canada is maybe not going to be moved to the next phase. Even though we are able to, to do so, we are able to move them to next phases. I think in his case, unfortunately, though, he's not going to be moved anywhere further, and we're actually going to have to reject him. Uh, well, and the well, reason being... Sorry to interrupt, Paula. A way to reject, would it be through the rejection letter, like we saw in the message? Or the yes, that's actually a great point. So... Uh, that's a really, really great point. So what we would actually do is we can send that rejection letter uh, saying, thank you for interviewing for this position, but we're not looking to move forward. Uh, and you can do it. I would say that you don't want to do it right after the case study or right after you've had an interview with them, because that can often, often demoralize the candidates. What we suggest is maybe sending it at 9 a.m. tomorrow, um, you know, so it's not done right after the interview. And so you can schedule it to go out tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, and then afterwards, on, on, for, on your end, you can simply just reject them as, you know, uh, underqualified uh, or whatever your rejection reasons are. Uh, and then you want to save this candidate in the talent pool because you never know, there may have been something that we missed in this candidate, but we do want to keep him in the talent pool. And you can actually also write the rejection letter within here as well uh, if you wanted to and then reject and send or don't send message. So in this case, I won't send a message because I've already sent it uh, through the other platform. So don't send message. And that's what you have on kind of rejecting the candidate. Any questions so far? Anything that, you know, we can kind of on rejections. Um, and then you can have a whole- Feel free to write your you know, questions in the Q&A throughout this demo and we can answer them at the end of this webinar. Okay. Yeah, you can also keep track of all the candidates who have been rejected just within the rejected tab of the application. But let's say we have a different uh, scenario. Let's say we have Ariane Williams, who actually is a really good candidate. Again, we can see her res resume right here on the left-hand side. Uh, we've sent her messages, and now we're looking at her notes. She's a new candidate, so really uh, we can see she... she uh, Toby thinks she's a fantastic hire. Uh, and then Holly said that she did really well on the call. So you're able to move her to different phases. So obviously, of course, she first had the phone call, then she had the in-person interview, and then she did the case study. But we're at the point where, you know, I see that everyone's kind of gone through all the stages and said that she was great. So we want to actually send her an offer. So I've you can send, you can put her in the offer stage, which we can see right here, and then send her an offer letter. So let's see if I drag and drop something from my desktop right here. This is obviously not it. Let's do this. But any PDF that is essentially um, an offer letter, I'm sending her a pay slip because that is what it is. And you can say, hi, Arian. Happy to offer you this job. And then you can send the offer letter. One, this offer letter will also be sent with an electronic signature, and once it's signed, it will actually appear in here as well, as we can see it's pending, but on her end, Ariane Williams at this email will receive an ability to electronically sign her offer letter as well. And that's how you take through the process of hiring the best and top talent here in Factorial HRIS. Amazing. So... Hypothetically, if, you know, the employee did um, accept the offer that you had just sent, 
what would be as an HR manager, the steps to onboard that employee? Are there any documents um, that I can have access to any uh, steps to correctly handle the onboarding process that I can take? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's give the exam example of Tia Hunt, who's actually signed her uh, her offer letter. We can actually create her as an employee right in here on the left, on the right hand side. So uh, what we can do is we would put Tia, we'd put her an email at gmail.com. Uh, and then we would select which team she'd be a part of let's say it's sales and she'd be a part of the Scranton office and then click next you would pick her role so again she would be a regional manager uh, or assistant to the regional manager in her case so maybe we'd put her as a sales representative she'd be a senior sales representative her salary um, and then click next her contract start date would be today or maybe in a week, you know, nobody really starts the same day they get hired. And then we can send her a factorial invite and add the employee. So now this employee will directly be added into the fact, uh, factorials uh, employee tab. So this is where you're really keeping track of all your employees um, that you manage. So in here, we again see all this information. Her invite has been sent to her, so she's able to go in and maybe add any documents that she needs to or any personal information. On your end as the admin or the manager, you're able to also set tasks for her to start her onboarding. And so the best thing to do is go into the task tab and you can create a task or you can create template tasks. So some of them, such as import a task, I already have a new employee onboarding task created. And so you can select that to help onboard the client. So now the, uh, the candidate, the candidate now has different stages to when they want to, um, uh, when they have to fulfill certain tasks. This may be trainings. This may be just being assigned a work buddy, reading through an employee manual guidebook, whatever it may be. These steps are already outlined for your uh, new hire. So it makes it super efficient and very, very simple and easy to onboard and clean to onboard your candidates. Your candidates will be very satisfied. You know, they're not going through the chaos of what do I need to do a week before my job? They'll have everything written out for them. Very cool. Um, but what if in the scenario that within this vast candidate pool, I still can't quite find that candidate that I'm looking for for a specific position? What do I what do I do then? For sure. So you can jump into back into recruitment and you can jump into your entire candidate pool from all the candidates that have been applying. Perhaps they've even applied to the New York office or Utica office. Um, and so you're still kind of searching for a candidate. So this is where tags really come in handy. Tags come in handy because, you know, for this specific role, I am looking for somebody with leadership skills and sales acumen. Uh, and so here I can filter through and I'm able to see candidates who have applied who have um, these, these skills. So I see Mitchell Knapp, Knapp uh, who's applied from Indeed. Maybe they're a great candidate to be hired, you know, and this is where I'll be able to look at their CV, uh, look through their notes, um, and their files. And so I see here that unfortunately this person was impolite and wasn't great, but you never know. In some cases, it's somebody that does work for um, for your job as well. And so this is what's great about keeping all of the candidates that have ever applied in the candidate pool. And the tags are also super important because you can filter by the tags that you require. Maybe you require a more specific skill set, such as knowing Python or knowing English or knowing French um, and the different languages requirements. Okay, awesome. Um, one last question on my end. If I know someone who would be a great candidate for a position, am I able to uh, refer a candidate? Yeah, for sure. So that is also a great way to attract some top talent is through open positions. So any employee uh, of your company is able to refer candidates. So over here, you can see the job posting. So we have a job posting for us uh, to the regional manager. You can simply share the link with your, uh, you know, with your ex-colleague or your, um, the candidate that you believe is a great fit for this role, or you can actually do a full on referral and input their name. So I could do Pauline, um, and then we can put your email and phone number and your personal URL, like your LinkedIn. And maybe you've even provided me your CV, which I can attach uh, to refer you as a candidate. 
And what's really great is that back in the Canada pool, you'll actually be able to filter by referred candidates. Um, so you're able to see which candidates have been referred and by whom they've been referred as well. So it's a great way to also implement the policy of if you're, uh, you know, compensating your employees for giving great for giving great referrals that get hired. So it's a great way of keeping track of that as well. All right. Well, I think you did a great job uh, summarizing the ATS system and, you know, how how you can leverage the ATS system through factorial. Um, you know, thank you very much for, their, for that presentation. Um, all in all, you know, ATS really empowers recruiters to navigate this vast applicant pool that they get every day, um, saves time and resources while ensuring a fair and systematic evaluation of everyone who applies. Uh, so we encourage you uh, to try out Factorial's ATS. And if you're not ready for a demo quite yet, we offer a 14 day free trial as well. So, yeah, so, perfect. Thank well, you so much, Pauline, for organizing this. Of Thanks course. everyone for attending. This was loads of fun. All right, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.